is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. I thought I would do this video about a day in the life of a solar watcher. Um, what on earth is a solar watcher? Well, someone that's watching the data and watching how many kilowatt hours they're getting and a bit obsessed about it, watching it a little bit too much. Uh, I know that's not for everyone and sometimes I might come across as a bit of a data geek. So I thought I'd share the sort of thing that I do and the reasons why I do it. And it's all about learning about your system. So if I'm learning about the system, if I describe it, then hopefully I'm sharing. I'm sharing uh, what I'm discovering and why I do these various things, which most of the time, I've got to confess, isn't the ideal way of doing things. So just because I'm a bit of a control freak, just because I like to fiddle and like to change things, doesn't actually mean I make it better. If I change the settings uh, too often, then sometimes I can forget what I'm doing and I'll leave it in the wrong mode and it'll be charging from the grid when it shouldn't be or heaven knows what else. Anyway, a day in the life of a solar watcher. What happens? All the way from waking up. Here we go. So the first thing to see is that we've got some sun. The sun is up. We've got some generation, 358 watts. You can also see the battery is at 77% at uh, 6.20 in the morning. So pretty much we've used a quarter of the battery almost. But we're charging at 179 watts. We're putting 29 watts out to the grid. And there's only an AC load in the house of 178 watts. So everything's covered. The day's starting. But the important one that I keep checking, two watt hours import from the grid. And that was from running a grid set point of minus 30 watts for the night. So time to walk Cracker out in the Norfolk countryside, but I do not take my phone with me. I am not data watching while we're out walking. So we're back from our walk. It's 9.30 and we're at four watt hours now for the day so far. Battery is up to 89%, so we've added 12% while we're out walking. I've got the Victron inverter set to 20 amps, so that's going to limit the amount of charging that goes on to 1000 watts roughly. And if we've got more solar than the 1000, then that's going to go out to the eddy because I've got eddy set in normal mode, so any excess solar, the eddy will be soaking up. And the eddy responds nice and fast, so it's battery and eddy coming first. That's the priorities I've got set. That's a shame. Eddy uh, with only 0.8 kilowatt hours. Water's not hot enough yet for uh, washing up. But never mind, we can always boil a pan of water on the induction hob, and that should give us enough hot water for the washing up. So the AC loads, they're going to go up, and the battery charging, well, that's going to stop. In fact, we're pulling from the battery here just to heat this water up so we can get some washing up done. So now we're home. Any task that we do that uses electricity, that's going to delay the hot water getting heated and also delay the battery being charged. But bacon sandwiches, well, they can't wait, can they? Neither can the coffee. And thankfully, because this battery reacts quite quickly, there's not a lot of ramp up and ramp down. So we're still only at five watt hours import from the grid. A quick look at the Octopus Energy data and I can see that yesterday's data still hasn't been updated. So I can't update the spreadsheet as to how many kilowatt hours or fractions of a kilowatt hour we used from the grid yesterday. So a quick look at the monthly data from Octopus Energy. That reveals that we're at a very low level for the month of grid import. And there were just two days where it's two tenths. The day before yesterday was a tenth. Those are the bigger days for us. Every battery has ramp up and ramp down and it pulls from the grid eventually. But you can avoid it. So some of these things that I'm doing, reducing the charge levels and looking after what we do and when we do it, it all makes a difference. It makes a difference that it's saving tenths or fractions of a tenth and keeping these numbers low. So I'm not doing it just to save money. It's not about the money. It's about the data. It's about keeping these figures low and seeing what is achievable. And when you've got to the limit, when you've found out what you can achieve, well, then, of course, I relax and don't worry about it. But I do some of these tests to share and show you what goes on. So it's 10 o'clock, a quick look at the eddy data, and we can see we're up to almost one kilowatt hour of import into the hot water. Today it's probably going to take between three and four kilowatt hours in total, so we're a long way off yet. So I like to have a quick look at the graphs and see what's going on. Here we can see that the eddy's been doing okay. It's gradually been going up as we've had more solar usage. But as soon as I started cooking and uh, making ourselves a coffee, then obviously the eddy stops and disappears, but it'll be back again and it will heat up. There's plenty of energy today. 
I think we're averaging at the moment about uh, 38 kilowatt hours a day in July. So we should have plenty, even on a cloudy day. The worst we've seen in July so far is 13 kilowatt hours. That should be enough to heat the hot water, do all our household tasks, and of course charge the battery back up. But will we have enough to charge the car? The Mini is only at 46%, I think, and uh, we're not planning to go out today, so we don't need it, but it would be nice to add some charge to it. Looks like the sun's just come out, so we're getting a bit more sunshine than I expected. The Eddy's up to 3 kilowatts of charging, while we're still trickle charging the battery at 1 kilowatt. But by 11 o'clock, I noticed that the voltage of the battery has now risen. Uh, the voltage that we're aiming for is 52.4 volts, so it must be getting close, hence the 97%. Uh, it won't be long and it'll switch over to 100%. Grid import is now 7 watt hours for the day. In fact, looking at the forecast data, we're actually on track. It's forecast it quite accurately so far. So if it carries on being accurate for the rest of the day, it looks like the sun's about to disappear. And the octopus data, that's now in and up to date. So 84 watt hours yesterday, 26 pence. Time to update the spreadsheet. So my Pylon Tech batteries, they're nearly full. The hot water's got 3.8 kilowatt hours added into it. That should be pretty hot water. Now it's time to think about charging the car. So I can switch the Zappi into Eco Plus mode and any export, any excess export we've got can now be adding miles onto the Mini. We're only at 48% at the moment, 55 miles. So it could definitely do with a few more art miles being added. I've set the Victron inverter to make sure that I'm charging to the car at 2 kilowatts. So even if the sun goes in, the battery will then support and top up. So we're not avoiding drain, we're actually using the battery to support car charging. What I want is it to go continuously. I don't want it to start and stop because those starts and stops, that's what causes the grid pull with the ramp up and ramp down. So it's one o'clock and we've only put 1.5 kilowatt hours into the Mini, but it's time to cook lunch. So I'm going to turn the Zappi off. Now doing it manually, again, that's going to avoid grid draw because we do one thing at a time. I could just leave it to adjust and do its thing automatically, but there will be a little bit of grid draw. So again, I'm trying to get those low numbers. So I'm doing it manually. And uh, this is where I'm sort of saying it's a bit excessive and am I really hurting myself because one of these days I'll just forget something and then I'll be using more grid input. So fiddling with it is helpful, gets the numbers down, but can lead you into mistakes as well. Two o'clock and the Mini's up to 54% state of charge and 60 miles of range. Not much, but we're only just getting started. I wonder if we will get any sunshine this afternoon. And the answer is yes, more than was forecast. But now we're charging the car with the Zappi and we're working with larger loads with the sun coming out. Of course, there's going to be more grid draw, more ramp up and ramp down. We've just jumped up to 20 watt hours of grid import. Now we're charging the car. This chart shows it quite well pictorially that when we've got more grid draw, you can see it's because the Zappi is using more energy. There's more sunshine. So when the clouds come over, the loads are bigger that are going up and down. 56% and 63 miles. A quick look at the My Energy app to see the same data but represented pictorially. I don't use this very often. Now I have Home Assistant and we've used 10.25 kilowatt hours in the Zappi so far. It's probably worth saying at this moment that the reason I'm including screenshots and I'm not editing them and cropping them to make them look neater is to include that header at the top that shows what time that I'm taking the screenshot. Half two now, and I've set the Victron inverter to make sure that the Zappi is charging at four kilowatts. More sunshine, so I'm going to try and keep it steady at a good four kilowatts plus. 58%, 66 miles of range. And another hour of better weather than expected, so it does look like we're going to get some car charging done after all. 60% and 68 miles of range. And this is a good time to point out a little odd discrepancy here. The My Energy app is showing 10.25 kilowatt hours, but we know that the data coming through from the My Energy servers that I'm seeing in Home Assistant is only showing six kilowatt hours. So which one's real? Which one's accurate? I guess that the app is showing a longer duration of the session of when I actually plugged the car in, not the data actually just today. It's a little bit left over from yesterday. Perhaps, perhaps that's what the difference is. 
It's nearly five o'clock. Solar is now down to 1.7 kilowatts. So that's pretty much at the level where we can't charge the car with excess solar because we're still using three or four hundred watts of that to run the house. So it's time, time to turn the eddy off. Nope, misspoke. Turn the zappy off. We're now up to 75 watt hours grid import for the day. And all the spare excess solar now I've turned the zappy off is now going towards the eddy. So we're finishing the day on 78% and 93 miles of range. That's better than I thought we were going to get for the day, so very happy. Looking at the chart at the bottom, you can really see how the Victron inverter is maintaining that charge rate at 2 kilowatts. And then we, of course, turn the charger off and then the eddy takes over. And you can see that that's following what we've got available as solar excess, rather than being supported by the battery. So that's 11 kilowatt hours in total into the mini via the Zappi. And uh, the chart showing the My Energy grid import, that's interesting to see it's showing 0.12, so 120 watt hours, more than Solar Edge is showing at 75 watt hours. And it's often the case the My Energy app is showing more, Solar Edge shows less and is much more accurate according to what comes through the next day from Octopus Energy. It's probably worth saying at this point that the Victron app, um, which I chose Victron partly because of the app and how good it is and the data. I don't actually use the app very much at all. Um, and that's because the Victron data goes through Home Assistant and I prefer seeing it inside the Home Assistant uh, environment. The graphs, the data itself and the way I can choose how I present it works best for me that way. So for completeness, it probably is worth mentioning, I do look at the weather radar map occasionally as well to check out whether there's going to be any clear spells or cloud cover coming round. And to my surprise, there was a little bit more sunshine right at the end of the day, so I uh, switched on the Zappy charger again, set the Victron inverter to charge at 2 kilowatts, and uh, left it continuously charging until there was virtually no solar. So I've burnt a little bit of the battery um, before the end of the solar day, but that's because it looks like the weather's going to be even worse tomorrow. So with fewer kilowatt hours, I thought I'd squeeze another kilowatt hour or so into the Mini. An observation from watching this graph though, um, the export margin that's set on the Zappi is currently set to 100 watts and it's interesting in this data that you can see from my energy that the amount that it charges bounces from 2000 watts to 1900 watts, it bounces within the 100 watt export margin. If I set that to 250, it bounces within the 250 watt margin as well, which isn't how I'd expect it to work. I would have thought if you set an export margin, it would stick to that single figure, not bounce between the two bounds of it. So we finished the day with 80% and 97 miles of indicated range. That's 11.8 kilowatt hours into the Zappi, 4.7 kilowatt hours into the Eddy, and 8.7 kilowatt hours running the house all day. Finished the day with 96% of the uh, Pylon Tech battery still available throughout the night. I'll probably lose 12 or 13% overnight, so I should wake with about 82, 83, 84%, something in that region. We used 76 watt hours from the grid for the day as well. And finally, we exported 2.685 kilowatt hours back to the grid. I don't mind that export, but I know it could be avoided. If I set the export margins on the Eddy and Zappi down to zero, and I didn't uh, export so much from the Victron side, then I could export a lot less, but I know it would mean with a little bit more grid import. And the yellow in this graph from the My Energy app gives you a clear indication of what the export throughout the day actually looked like. And this is how our solar day ends here, with a My Energy chart that shows absolutely nothing. No solar coming in, no consumption, nothing whatsoever. And the reason for that is because it can't see the battery. I haven't installed um, a CT clamp on the battery yet, so it can't see what's going on. And the battery is picking up the house load, and hence it sees nothing. It is my intention to sort that at some time and get that CT clamp installed, but I'm in no rush to do it at the moment. So that's the end of our solar day, so one of the last things I'll do now is update the spreadsheet to show how much generation we had from each of the arrays. Thank you so much for watching the video, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope there's some useful information for you. Some days I might monitor it a little bit less, some days maybe even a little bit more. Depends what else is going on during the day and whether I'm on a mission to try and discover something in the data. Anyway, take care, thanks again for watching, see you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.